Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm going to be reviewing DJI's new Phantom 4 Pro quadcopter. Now, I know what you're asking, didn't DJI just release the Phantom 4 earlier this year? Yeah, they did, and they're not afraid to iterate quickly on their products, even if that means that their previous generation quadcopters get outdated in just nine months. And that's why it's tricky to review these drones. It's not just about deciphering the features in the latest and greatest. It's also about putting these drones and these features in the context of what we think these devices are becoming and the state of new technologies like computer vision being incorporated. Now with the Phantom 4 Pro, three important features differentiate it from the standard Phantom 4, which you can buy now at a street price of about $1,000. The P4 Pro has a redesigned camera system, new situational awareness sensors, and a new transmitter option. First off, the new camera. While the Phantom 3 Professional and the Phantom 4 can shoot and record at 4K resolution, we're at a point with these quadcopter cameras where consumers should care about the quality of the sensor on the cameras, not just the number of pixels. The P3 and the P4 use essentially GoPro equivalent sensors and optics, which were fine for resolving detail at 4K as long as the light was good. The Phantom 4 Pro has a massively improved camera sensor, a one inch Sony Exmor back illuminated sensor that's the equivalent of what you'd find on a high end professional point and shoot like the Sony RX100, which itself costs more than $500. That large back illuminated sensor has two potential advantages. Larger individual pixels that can suck in and receive more light, more photons in low light situations. And when combined with a lens aperture of f2.8, the ability to adjust focus and take advantage of visually pleasing depth of field effects, bokeh in your drone shots. Now in my testing, the larger sensor made a big difference, especially in golden hour or shooting in the early evening. I could catch details in landscapes as the sun was setting, cranking exposure compensation down three stops to prevent ISO from ramping up and filling the scene with noise. In daylight, the benefits of a larger sensor reveal themselves in the fine details, which makes shooting in 4K and then cropping in to 1080 for digital pans actually practical. I'm also pleased that DJI is selling ND filters now for this camera as well. So you can film in daylight without having to crank the shutter up super high. Now speaking of the shutter, DJI is also really excited that they put a mechanical shutter in the camera, which does in my testing alleviate some of the rolling shutter problems of the earlier cameras. In practice, the mechanical shutter makes shots where you're using the drone like a tripod in the sky spinning around much smoother than before. Spinning objects in scenes like propeller blades or fans also lose that characteristic rolling shutter effect, but aggressive turns still show a little bit of wobbling, so we aren't completely rid of the jello shots just yet. The sensor isn't a global shutter sensor, which would really be expensive to put in a camera of this size. The camera system is also able to do more with the image captured, processing 4K video at 60 frames per second, which is double than before, and encoding at 100 megabits a second. That's a lot of data, really large files here. That high bit rate combined with the ability to shoot in D-log color profile means that cinematographers can theoretically manipulate the video for specific color styles or to match grading on other cameras used in a same shoot. I shot a bunch of video in flat D-log and handed off the footage to our producer Joey to test out in DaVinci Resolve. Now he was able to tweak different parts of the image to good effect, making trees and foliage pop while masking off highlights in the sky to reduce glare. And I had some success adjusting that footage in Adobe Premiere Pro as well, though still found that the camera tends to blow out highlights even when stepping down exposure. And since we're talking about these drone cameras like we do dedicated point and shoot and digital cameras, we also have to be critical of the other characteristics like the lenses. And these cameras still have plastic lenses that produce pretty ugly flaring when pointing at the sun. And autofocus on the sensor I found to be slow and would often miss focus when there wasn't enough light to properly lock onto a subject in a distance. And a few times I ended up with night shots where nothing was in focus. It just missed autofocus completely. 
Overall though, I'm still really happy with the video quality of the Phantom 4 Pro, but it still has a ways to go before reaching the quality of DJI's Micro Four Thirds more expensive X5 camera system, or even the quality of handheld digital cameras with one inch Sony sensors like the RX100. The other major new feature in the Phantom 4 Pro ends up being the reason why this feels like a real game changer. The P4 introduced world-facing stereo cameras on the front of the drone that allowed it to detect obstacles in the environment and actually avoid them. Now that feature also made it into the Mavic Pro as well, but only one set of those cameras. And one degree of obstacle avoidance was never gonna be enough in these drones. That's why I asked DJI, when were they gonna put more? In the Phantom 4 Pro, DJI has put another pair of stereo cameras on the rear of the drone, as well as new infrared sensors on the left and the right. Now combine that with the downward facing camera systems, that's five degrees of situational awareness, which in the field gave me a tremendous amount of confidence flying the quad through tree lines and at lower altitudes. Now I was also concerned that the infrared sensors on the sides wouldn't be as effective for situational awareness and obstacle avoidance as the stereo cameras, but other than not being able to get these visual indicators on screen about the distance you are from objects, the quad would stop on a dime at full speed when flying left and right directly into buildings and never no crashes at all. So after flying the Phantom 4 Pro, I really can't imagine going back to the Phantom 3 or any quadcopter really without these type of environmental awareness sensors. DJI has also been making advances in its computer vision visual tracking system. The P4 had active track, which lets you identify a subject in frame and have the quad keep it centered in your screen. Now, I wasn't impressed with that feature on the P4. It would lose subjects pretty easily in real environments, get people confused with lampposts, and I still think it's a novelty feature in the P4 Pro, but it's getting better. The system is smart enough now to recognize the difference between a person, a bicycle, and a car automatically, but it still flies too slowly in that active tracking mode, much slower than its rated max speed of 30 miles per hour to make it useful. It's not fast enough to track a fast bicyclist going down a track, for example, and couldn't tail a car driving around a parking lot. But it's best used for pedestrians walking or skateboarders in open environments like sports fields, arenas, beaches, or open terrain. And if you're gonna be shooting video for production and tracking a subject, you're better off flying manually and practicing manual flying. Finally, there's the new transmitter option. Now $1,500 gets you the P4 Pro, but spend an extra $300 and you'll get an RC that comes with a built-in screen so you don't have to use your own phone or tablet. Initially, I was really skeptical about this upsell. $300 is a lot for what's essentially a 1080p Android tablet with limited onboard storage and no cellular connectivity for maps. And while the transmitter does have HDMI out for connecting to monitors, you can't tether it to a phone or a tablet on this controller if you buy the one with the built-in screen. You have to use DJI's display. But it's a luxury that I grew to love. The screen is extremely bright. It works in great in daylight and the battery lasts long. You never have to worry about it because it's tied to the big battery inside the transmitter. And the unexpected convenience of not having to take out your phone and mount it onto the transmitter actually made a huge difference in the versatility of the flying experience. I really underestimated the advantage of having a self-contained package in the transmitter. It made flying that much more fun. Still, it really is a non-essential luxury that most people can live without. Now, battery life on the P4 Pro is rated at 30 minutes, and I'm really pleased to report that I was getting between 25 and 30 minutes of flight time on the Phantom 4 Pro. DJI's claims this time were accurate. I was also thankful that the P4 Pro uses the same battery system as the P4, and there don't seem to be any supply shortages this time around. Now back in April, I was really skeptical of the P4. Its new features didn't feel complete to me and it wasn't as big a leap over the Phantom 3 as the Phantom 3 was over the Phantom 2. The Phantom 4 Pro feels like the true successor to the Phantom 3 line. It's hands down the best consumer drone at this price point and a great step up if you already have a Phantom 3 and a no brainer upgrade if you're still flying on a Phantom 2. At $1,500, it's still too expensive for me to recommend as your very first quadcopter, but I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it for anyone who's ready for this caliber of flying robot.